Hey guys, today we are going to talk about local game stores and how are they doing so far. Uh, without specifically naming the game stores because people did not like that before, I will say that many of them are not doing super well. So in a economy which we have right now, it is a tough economy. Money is getting tighter and when money gets tighter, cards generally speaking are often kind of pushed to the side. So when we talk about sports cards, magic cards, Pokemon cards, all Locana, Sorcery, Meta Zoo, it's all mostly the same type of discussion that we are going to have. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting topic. I, I feel like it is relevant today because a lot of young people, they start businesses and they don't really know how to run a business or how expensive businesses get. I've seen Many people undercapitalized, um, they are just not ready to run a business. They just don't have the ability to properly, and it's kind of, they're set up to fail because they don't have enough money to begin with. Uh, you need not just money for the product, you need money for the overhead, the, the rent, the employees that you eventually need, and uh, so on. And many of these game stores are just, not able, if you're doing it as a hobby, yeah, more power to you. It's a really fun hobby, and that's what I did it as. I never did it for profit. We never made any money on it. Uh, we sold things to what we got it for. So, buy list, it was just a friend's hangout. You know, many people think, oh, your store failed, and so on. Um, it, it did what it was supposed to do, which is get us distribution prices for my group of friends. We had uh, five, ten friends, depending on the period in time, who were avid fans of buying. Um, we actually had one friend buy $62,000 of Fallout recently. And that was that distribution cost, which is actually a pretty good deal. Now, you have to play this game where you have to buy like shitty product. And you have to buy some like Vivid Voltage before they sell you some newer product, right? As they try to empty it. But... Overall, it is a very, very interesting experience and something that I want you guys to understand is it's fascinating because it's something where most people won't understand why the business fails, right? So let me just read this to you. I think this is very good. This was from Reddit. I don't mean to be down on fellow local game store owners, but in my observation, too many people open a store for way the wrong reasons. Local game stores tend to be a subject to the same failure rates as people who want to open a cute little bakery cafe because of the aesthetics and quickly realizing that working 80 hours a week and waking up at 5 a.m. for thin margins is in fact difficult. I did a full demographic analysis of Blank City using sensor data about housing prices as proxy for income along with a bunch of other qualifiers to make sure it was a good economic decision. People opening a store when there are plenty others around them are insane unless they have a well-founded belief that they have some real competitive advantage when it comes to out-competing their neighbors. So basically, yeah, um, in a nutshell, that, that's it. Um, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's not easy to make money in any business but especially in the card business i find that it's probably one of the most difficult things to do because your customer base isn't a normal customer base i, I say this because it's it is not and if you have ever sold cards before you understand rent for a physical location is a killer and it's not unique to a game store in the UK, you have to be crazy to open a store. Actually, I Pokemon Pokey Chloe just opened her store. Landlords want base, want rent based on 90s foot rate, but then matched to the price of the property going way up. So they all sit there empty. I'll add this is probably part of why you see so many failing stores. Anyone with business sense runs some numbers first before renting. People who just want a store rent first then calculate cost us isn't much different uh, this is from the min max games owner it's insane going to a rundown strip mall and seeing how much they are asking for rent right now my local game store is a primo 
strip mall location. Said strip mall has a pretty nice restaurant space that has been vacant for 15-ish years. The strip mall owner is just leaving money on the table, asking way, way too much rent. Waiting 15 years for the right tenant seems insane. In the U.S., it's common in commercial lending leases for the lender bank to have veto power on the money square foot on the offer by the landlord because a too low number will devalue the property overall and hurt their collateral book value. So the banker has an internal floor rate of $45 a square foot, but the local market is only at $30, $35, then the bank will never allow building owners to lease the space at that level. So many local game owners are hobbyists first and business people second. They love the hobby, but they don't know how to run a business. That's why these stores will probably be around for two to three years, then they're gone. As someone who tried to run an online store back in the early 20s or 2000s, the biggest problem is still relevant today in which you need a lot of cash flow and capital because your profits are so small and you need to keep with new releases. I think a local game store is like a 5-10 year business where you're basically accumulating inventory in the first few years before you really become profitable. Unfortunately, that time frame is too long for a lot of businesses to stay around. I'd rather do a rip and ship online platform than start a brick and mortar local game store. So that's what a lot of people are doing. They're just doing rip and ships, right? Hey, you buy from us, we open it for you and we ship it out to you. And we charge you a premium because we're YouTube or Twitch celebrities, right? I have owned my shop for almost 12 years now and for the first five or so it was pretty much only me running it. While I was a former high level magic player and tournament grinder, I also had common sense and business sense and that is why I'm still around today. I've seen at least 10 to 15 other stores come and go around me since I opened. That being said, people just don't have a clue how to run a business. Sounds almost like the local game store I work at. The owner is a former high-level judge. The majority of the business is buying and selling magic singles. We get roughly 40 to 80 orders a day, ranging from single cards to entire commander decks. That's more than I thought a lot of people put into it. Even after most of the time, it's still not a good idea. Take into account the overall capital needed, the swing-like nature of business, Baldur's Gate, anyone, and how much a luxury good this stuff can be. Yeah, luxury goods, right? That is crazy. Is there any benefit to opening a local game store? You can do a lot with an online store, front pre-orders, sealed singles, etc. Yeah, man, opening a business is probably one of the hardest things to do in this current economy. Uh, and then opening a game store, which is a luxury business, is just insane. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.